All right, let's do it. Uh, we're talking a little bit about some of that passion and activism. Dalen, what can you tell us? Yeah, so years ago I uh, left Christianity, and actually Forrest, your channel really helped me do that, um, awesome. which was uh, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I was a Christian missionary for years, and I would travel around telling people about Jesus. And one day I got sick and tired of hearing all the straw men. I would hear preachers uh, talk about atheists, right? And I was like, well, I doubt anyone actually believes what we're saying atheists believe. So I started studying into it, started watching Forrest Valkai and Emma Throne and, and all of these other different people, right? And learned that atheists actually make a lot more sense than Christians. and through a lot of study and a lot of years, I, I ended up leaving it. At first, I was very angry about all the time wasted and all this other BS stuff. But now that it's been a few years, um, I've started having conversations with Christians again and started talking with them again. And I've noticed that the same stuff that led me away from Christianity is still like going on, obviously, right? All the straw men and and all the um, assumptions and, and all of this stuff. And now I get really angry because I'm like, well, you say I'm only an atheist because I've never read the Bible, but I have read the Bible many times. And that's what led me away, right? Like you say atheists believe everything came from nothing, but we don't believe that, mm -hmm. you know? And so I'm just wondering, like, how can I have respectful, kind conversations with people, explain that, you know, not every atheist views the world the same way and explain our, explain in such a way that's, um, that I don't get angry, that I, I'm no longer, like, getting angry with them and, and stuff and actually being productive in, in talking with people. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jimmy, you want to jump on that, sir? Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I understand the anger, uh, and I don't know that it ever really goes away. I think in my own experience, uh, you know, I came out and was very angry because I realized maybe I was told a lie, and maybe not even on purpose. You know, it's just kind of something that happens generationally. This uh, perpetual uh, belief system is just installed over and over and i just was one iteration of that uh and so that that anger is definitely understandable um I, and i just think that understanding that cycle and understanding where people come from uh will make it easier to be able to communicate understanding is very important to communication okay um and to have an effective communication knowing what you're communicating about i think is going to lay the groundwork for that to be easier uh, people have, we, we talked about a little bit earlier, or at least, uh, the hosts that were on earlier, we have a, a survival instinct to want to carry on, right? We have comforts that come from religion. We have this idea that we, uh, can stick around for a little longer, rekindle old relationships that we lost. Uh, and that's a very powerful thing to let go of. So you being somebody who were there should just be able to take that in and, uh, you know, kind of synthesize it and use it to to strengthen your communication with people that you're trying to make your point with and uh, i hope that was helpful yeah I, I would say like the something that that i find really resonates when when i'm talking to a religious person that i really like care about and i want to like establish a connection with um it helps to kind of pass on that emotion a little bit and, and let them feel rather than just sitting with it in yourself and you're the only one now who has to be calm and collected and rational the whole time and you have to contain if yeah, I, I have had religious people say to me when they find out I'm an atheist, they're like, oh, well, I guess you're not as good of a person as I thought you were. Or I guess you're not as smart cool. as I thought you were. Those are the things that people who <laughs> care about me have said to me. And so just, okay, so now I'm going to say that back to you. And I want you to just feel it for a second. Oh, you're a Christian? I guess you're not as smart as I thought you were. Do, do you think that you're going to respond the way that you assume I'm going to respond in this way? Um kind of sharing that emotion for a minute. I had somebody who was uh, you know, close to me tell me when they, they at first you know, started knowing me, like, oh, it's okay. God's going to bring you to your knees and take away everything you have, and then you'll know. Okay, you're going to lose everything you have and be brought to your knees by suffering, and then you'll understand there's no God. Do you feel good about that statement? And especially if I was proposing some other God, would you feel good about that statement that this thing that's in control of you is going to hurt you very badly to make you obey and listen like this? 
is that doing to you what you assume you're doing to me? No. Uh, and so kind of sharing that emotion a little bit, I find is really helpful when you're in a serious conversation. Uh, if it's something like this, where, you know, we're strangers talking over the interwebs weirdly, uh, maybe not. But if it's, especially if it's somebody that you care about or somebody that cares about you and somebody that you're really trying to get through to, helping them to understand that you're not just being contrarian and you didn't just decide on this. But in fact, you have an incredibly common deconstruction story. I was looking for reasons to prove God, couldn't find any, my faith fell apart. I was looking for reasons to disprove these atheists and to get them and to show them. Turns out their arguments made a lot of sense. My faith fell apart. I was looking for reasons to show that evolution isn't true, that the earth is actually young, that, that all these things. And actually the science checked out and my faith that like, this is something that we hear all the time. And believers who are used to arguing against straw men of atheists who are just this grumpy old goat that woke up in the morning, decided not to get out of bed on Sunday and hates babies. And that, that guy just wanted to be an atheist today because he's just so mean. Like having that actually be an experience that you can share and having the conversation be one that isn't so one-sided, especially not on your responsibility to be the adult in the room, I think is really productive. I know that was a lot for a very simple conversation, but those are things that I just uh, work with these things, you know? Yeah, Dalen, if I may, I want to kind of build on something that, uh, that Forrest said, which is that I think people sort of watch these shows where we are part of a educational nonprofit organization and we have these conversations with people who are like watching the show and calling into the show and then they take that model and want to maybe bring it home with them on some level. Everybody wants to like hang up on someone's ass and everybody <laughs> wants to sort of be snappy in that way. And I think it's really important to remind yourself that there's really no value in trying to teach anybody something that they don't want to learn. You know, that's something I definitely see in my clinical work as a therapist. It's something I see as the parent of a teenager. Like, it's just no fun. There's no value in trying to teach somebody something that they're not curious to ask questions about or interested in learning from you. And I, I hope that you don't feel this sort of, like, burden to evangelize in that way. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I appreciate... Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, really, I, I guess I just wanted to ask sort of where the rub is for you on all of this. I mean, I, I certainly can relate and recognize some of the discomfort or challenges of being an out atheist in sort of like a nominally Christian world and, and all of those kinds of things. Uh, but is there a particular relationship, a particular environment? I mean, where are you running into trouble or what feels difficult about the way you're living your life right now when it comes to some of these conversations? Uh, that is a, a really good question. So um, I think one of it is uh, I, I I don't think I'll ever be able to tell my parents. I mean, Forrest uh, has mentioned not telling his uh, mother-in-law because of uh, it would scare her and, and make her uncomfortable, right, um, and things like that. So I, I kind of feel the same way with, with my own mom. I'll, I'll never be able to tell her um, that I've left Christianity. But uh, I think the, the bigger one than even that one, that's the first one that came to mind. But the society I'm part of is is the military. I'm in the military currently, and so um, am I. So am I. it is just like an assumption. Go ahead. Go ahead, whoever was trying to speak. No, I just Sorry. wanted to let you know that I am uh, as well. So if you have anything uh, that you want, and I, I'm, uh, forgive me for interrupting, but uh, if you have anything that's military-related mm -hmm. as far as religion goes, I'd be happy to speak to that too. But please continue. Oh, awesome! Yeah, you're, you're, you're army, right? Uh, no, no, I, I am. Uh, I, I really would rather not um, get into specifics. But uh, okay, I, you can then, continue then, your point. Don't, then don't. Yeah, I understand. Um, I understand. Um, but uh, I, I work in the military, and it, it's highly religious where I'm at. And the assumption is that you are religious a lot of the time, or at least it feels that way to me. And uh, working in a job where it's so uh, essential for us to, to trust each other because of the type of work that I do in the military. It can sometimes cause um, strain on that trust when people find out that I am an atheist. And so, you know, these are kind of the things that I run into quite often, you know. Yeah, so can, can I speak with my experience on that, if you don't mind? Um, 
I, please, please go ahead. I understand those fears and I understand those concerns, but I have to say that in my experience, they have largely uh, not been, been true. Uh, I am able to, mm. from from my own, uh, you know, from my own point of view, I am able to get along and accomplish missions and execute tasks on a daily basis with people who are a lot different from me. Uh, when it comes down to it, having each other's mm. back is really important, and I think that. And, let, you know, barring some specific incidents where you may have uh, trouble with one individual, I think largely your your fear uh, or your concerns are probably going to be unfounded or maybe proven proven incorrect. Okay. Uh, because okay. basically I think everybody's there for the same reason. I, everybody typically has the same intent and them doing well, the team doing well relies on you doing well. And if you're able to get along with them, I think you're largely going to find that they're able to get along with you. I have been an out atheist for 15 years, and I've been in the military for 15 years. And I have some great friends uh, mm. that don't feel anything like I do when it comes to religion, uh, but are just as hardworking and uh, have very similar values. So uh, don't be afraid to be yourself, but also if you're, if you're respectful, you usually get that back, and you guys can work together seamlessly. Okay. Um, I, I appreciate that, and perhaps my fears are unfounded in in this area. What I um, I don't know. Uh, you guys might know this. There's like maybe some saying or something like all of the all of the worries that we have are non-existent or something like that. Or, or the worst things never happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. exactly. You, you could drive yourself crazy coming up with scenarios, uh, but you know, just go out there, be there in in, in the moment, live in the present, uh, and deal with it when it when it comes up. But uh, yeah, that's my opinion on, on the military aspect, so um, I hope that's helpful. Basically, mindfulness-based therapy all in uh, the couple of sentences. Great job, guys. <laughs> and, uh, and I hope that that, uh, I hope that, that yeah. does help. There are a million things that could go wrong, and it's yeah. valid to be concerned about them. Please, by all means, be careful, appropriately so, around some of these things. Uh, but, yeah, stay present in the moment. Don't drive yourself crazy over what could go wrong. Always good advice. Maybe you can, you know, if, if with your openness, you can help us dispel this rumor of no atheists and foxholes. Mm -hmm. really, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I hear that one quite often, and it's kind of like what with what Forrest said. I've I've heard people tell me things like, "Oh, well, when you're out in the middle of the ocean and this and that happens, mm -hmm. you know, you'll you'll be praying to someone." And I'm like, "Well, um, why don't you join the military, ex have those experiences, and then?" And then say things like that to me. Yeah. yeah, when I'm in my absolute weakest psychologically, when I am the most broken down emotionally, then I will finally have the insight that you think I should have been carrying all along. <laughs> that's that's, that's a great sales logic pitch. logic will really break through. Excellent, excellent thinking. Uh, but thank you so much for your bravery and even just asking these questions, sharing your story with us at all today, Dalen. Thanks for uh, Thank you for what you guys have said. <laughs> I, I really do appreciate your time.